Hello and welcome to the Docker for the beginners course. Now, in this course, you would be learning about Docker and how it is used in the uh, software development industry. As part of this course, we would be focusing on the theory part, all right, concepts, how does the Docker work, then we would be also doing hands on, and then we would be also doing a small project, how does a multi tier uh, Docker application works. As part of this course, all right, you will learn a uh, container overview, then you will understand how containers are used uh, in the industry and how is container different from the virtual machine. Then we will learn how to install Docker. Okay, then we will talk about Docker architecture. We'll talk about some Docker basic commands. You will learn how to build your own Docker images. All right, it could be a Python Docker based application image or Node.js Docker based application image. Then we'll look at how Docker networking works. We'll talk about the Docker storage. And finally, we'll close the session by understanding what is Docker Compose and how it is used. You can also enroll for this course on my website, which is webmagicinformatica.com. Okay, uh, where you will find the hands-on labs, the commands which you will see as part of this video. If you want a command uh, to be copy-pasted in your uh, lab environment, then in that scenario, you can go to webmagicinformatica.com and you can enroll for this course. Now, with this being said, let's start with our course. Hello. In this lesson, we are doing an overview on what are containers. Now, before we can talk about what are containers, let's first talk about how do we run applications in a traditional approach. So, if you want to run a Node application or a Java application, what you will do is you will first create a physical server or a virtual machine. On top of that, you will install the operating system. It could be Windows, it could be Linux, and then you will install the necessary run runtime dependencies, and then finally, you will run your application. Now you can run, you can install different different runtimes, different different dependencies for running different different uh, workloads. It could be your web server, it could be your database, it could be the queuing service also on the same server, and some automations. Now with this approach, we have certain issues or certain challenges, and the first challenge is resource dependency. Okay, so you are running this application or this entire stack on some infrastructure. It could be a physical server or a virtual machine. And this physical server and virtual machine will have certain firmware, hardware, or operating system drivers dependencies. So this application might run uh, fine on the current set of hardware or current virtual machine. But if let's say if I want to migrate it or if I want to run the same application on some other environment, it might not behave as it is working right now. Okay. So my plat my application are not is not agnostic. It might the behavior of my application might change depending upon where I'm running it. Second, if I'm running multiple stacks on the same server, I'm installing multiple runtimes and dependencies on the same server, then how would I manage the resources or how would my operating system manage the resources? Will it give more resources to my database and less resources to web server? And if it does so, then will my web server work fine? So how would I segregate the resources? My application are lesser portable because there is an dependency on the infrastructure where it is running okay even if i create a virtual machine image and if i run the image somewhere else creating this image is uh, not easy this virtual machine image so let's say i've created a virtual machine image on vmware okay and now i want to run i want to run the same image on aws you cannot just directly do it you will need to follow an import export process for it it takes longer time to set up my application every time i would so if i'm creating one more environment tomorrow let's say for my development i would need to do the same set of activities again like installing the dependencies installing the runtime and then running my application so it will take long, longer time to set up my application plus if i want to manage different environments i have to basically set up different different servers and again it could be a tedious task for me to set up different different environments so what we are trying to do with containers are we are trying to abstract the application layer or application and its dependency right from the operating system so my application my, my application doesn't need to worry about where it is running or which operating system it is running it will just get the right resources which is needed by it to run how do we do it so we follow a containerized approach for the application so you will still have your physical server or virtual machine on top of that, you will still have your operating system. It could be again Windows or Linux. 
on top of this you will install something known as a container runtime and this container runtime will abstract the resources now uh, what resources will it abstract the operating system resources the os kernel and what it will do is it will create containers for you okay and this container will have your application and everything which is needed by your application to run that is your application runtime and the dependency thus these containers will have its own memory and gpu allocated and they will have its own like each container will have its own compute resource allocated it will have its own networking uh, resources as well as storage resources like this you can run multiple containers on the same operating okay and each container will have a segregation of it. so with this approach what are we solving the first thing there is no dependencies on underlying infrastructure okay as long as you have the container runtime installed it could be on a physical server it could be on a virtual machine or it could be on a virtual machine running on aws if you have the container runtime installed same container would run anywhere the resources are well managed because i can segregate the resources i can allocate the compute resources according to my choice to these containers and they will only get those amount of resources from my operating system as I said, once you have containerized your application, you can run it anywhere as long as you have the container runtime installed on the infrastructure. These containers are quicker to set up. So once you create a container image, you don't need to again install the runtime dependencies for your application. It would be again in that self-sustained package, which is known as a container. Okay. So I can also put it in this way. Containers are nothing but it's a way of packaging your application with necessary runtime and dependency. It can run anywhere without worrying about on the operating system it does it has the necessary uh, runtime dependencies or resources installed or not okay you don't need to worry about managing different environments so on the same operating system or same server you can run different different environments you can have different different containers of different different environment it could be development testing production like all right you can have it on same server itself it's a proper resource segregation so Virtual machine also did similar thing, but virtual machine abstracted the physical resources like memory, CPU, and it after abstracting these physical resources, it created something known as a virtual machine will which have which will have its own operating. Containers, on the other hand, is not abstracting physical resources; it is abstracting your OS resources, your OS kernels, and using this abstracted OS kernel, it is creating containers, and these containers will have your application. VMs are not platform agnostic. So if I'm creating a VM on VMware or Hyper-V, I cannot just simply run it on, let's say, cloud. There are there is a process of import export. Containers, on the other hand, are platform agnostic. So if I create a container today on my laptop, a container image on my laptop, okay, or my desktop, I can use the same container image on a virtual machine running on AWS. I cannot version control the virtual machine images. If I create ten images of a virtual machine. And if you ask me what is the difference between the image one and image five, or right, what has changed, I won't be able to identify unless and until I'm making a note of it. Containers, on the other hand, are created from a configuration file. That configuration file has all the details like what is running inside the container, which runtime version it 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 has, which version of your application it has, and this configuration file is a text file, which you can easily control version control by keeping it in any. Uh, source code management tools like git all right or tfs vms have slower startup time since you would need to first boot the operating system then the application or the runtime and then finally your application so uh, application ultimately have a slower startup time containers on the other hand have a very fast startup time so you can have a container running in few seconds so this is the difference between virtual machines and containers now in previous slide, you saw something known as container runtime, which is needed for you to run container. So, what are what are the various container runtimes? So, just like in virtualization, we have hypervisors. We have hypervisor from VMware, which is ESXi. Then from Microsoft, we are Hyper-V, which lets me create virtual machines. Similarly, to create containers, you will require container runtime, and there are various container runtimes. To name, you have Docker, Podman. Container D, LXC, Rocket, right? So these are various container runtimes. You can install any of these container runtimes and you can start creating containers. Now, 
where you can run containers so i can run containers on my desktop it could be windows mac linux or it could be on server it could be windows server or it could be linux you can run you can install container runtimes anywhere you want and you can start running containers now what you can use docker or containers for so whenever you want fast consistent delivery of your application you want your application to behave as it is behaving in your developer's laptop all right it has to behave same in the production environment you want it to be consistent okay you have one uniform layer of container runtime installed everywhere and you run containers right these are the containers would run same everywhere and it will give you ultimately a fast fast delivery time for your application wherever you want responsive deployment and scaling so without any downtime you want to upgrade your application or you want to increase the number of application uh, nodes running or application resources running okay, you can use containers and whenever you want to run more workload right like let's say i want to run .net plus python right on same compute without uh, make without any making without making any troubles in terms of memory or resource allocation again i can think of using containers we can't containers again lets me allocate resources all right to each container so docker let me allocate resources to the containers which so this is what containers are this is for this video thank you for watching hello so in this lab i will show you how to install docker engine on linux operating system now docker can be installed on various linux distro it could be centos uh, ubuntu debian suzy linux it could be installed on different different types of linux distros so in this demo what we're going to do is we will install docker engine on amazon linux 2 operating system so let's try it out i've already created an amazon linux ec2 instance with t2 micro in size okay and using the ec2 instance connect we will connect to this machine you can optionally if you want to take ssh or put a you can even do that first i'll elevate myself as a super user now you can simply say yum install docker in amazon linux 2 in other linux distros you might need to add the url or the uh, repository url to their package manager okay so for example if you're installing uh, docker on centos operating system then you will need to go to yum config manager and you will need to add the docker repo in yum config manager so that it can be downloaded in uh, in amazon linux it is already added so you don't need to do much over here you just need to simply say yum install docker and it will install docker and its necessary dependencies Now, once the Docker is installed, you can say service or system CTL Docker start. And you can check the Docker version. Optionally, you can also say Docker info to check if it has installed the right version with necessary network or storage drivers. Okay, now since we have install docker let's run a container very quickly so i can say docker run hello world and run a container so we run a container and that container executed and so show this message which says hello from docker you can see the container has executed by doing docker psi for name all right so this is it for this lab guys thank you for watching hello so in this lab we'll talk about what are the other ways of doing uh, the hands-on lab as part of this course so for those of you who cannot create uh, easy to instances on aws or any other cloud platform or don't have the resources on your laptop to install docker and still want to do the labs as part of this course then you can try out this platform known as play with docker so play with docker provides you an uh, web-based interface where you can create instances okay and uh, you can log into these instances and run docker commands or run, uh, create docker containers through a web-based console itself the only thing you require to use this website is a docker hub account and 
once you log log into your docker account or using the logger docker credentials if you log into this website you would be able to do the labs so let's try it out so you can search for play with docker and this is the link you can say login and then you can say login with docker and it might ask you your docker credentials if you're doing it for the first time And over here now you can simply say add instance you can add up to three instances what i believe okay so if you want to do docker swarm practicals you can even do that and once your instance is ready you can run commands so you can say docker let's say hyphen hyphen version docker is running i can say docker run hello world and here we have a hello world container getting created okay so this is what player docker does and this is it for this lab guys thank you for watching hello so in this lesson we are talking about the docker architecture what are the building blocks of docker and how does docker works so let's get down to it so let's say that you have an operating system like it could be a virtual machine or a physical server let's say it is a docker host on top of docker host you will install the docker engine and once you install the docker engine the docker daemon would be available to you right now you can instruct the docker daemon to basically create containers create images all right to various stuff which docker supports or what docker is meant to do now in order to do that okay you will need to use a docker client like docker client okay Docker client is nothing but the CLI through which you will basically uh, give your instruction to Docker daemon. Now the Docker client is installed with the Docker engine itself, so you don't need to install separately anything in your system. The Docker host where you are installing the Docker engine, there itself you can run the command. Okay, and you have something known as Docker registry where the images or Docker images are kept. Okay, now the Docker registry can be running locally on the docker host or it could be uh, somewhere some on other system or it could be some uh, service all right uh, sold to you where you can keep your uh, docker images right now let's say that i issue a command which is docker build so what docker build command will do docker build command will look for a docker configuration file in from whichever directory you are running the docker build command and it will build an image right and this build, image is built locally on the docker host itself now, if you run docker pull command, it will pull the image from the docker registry. By default, there is a community based docker registry known as docker hub, where all the images are kept or you can also push your own images if you want to. Okay, so docker pull will download the image. By default, it will download the image from docker hub, but you can also configure other docker registries. All right, for example, AWS has something known as Elastic Container Registry where you can keep your Docker images. Similarly, Azure has Azure Container Registry and Google has Google Container Registry where Docker images can be pushed and it can be kept. Okay, and if you run the Docker run command, all right, with the image from which you want to create a container, Docker daemon will create a container for you, all right, on the Docker host itself. So this is how the docker architecture is or this is, are the building blocks for docker now again revising the key components you have docker host it is a machine on which your containers are running or docker engine is installed you have docker daemon it's a process which listens to the command which you will issue you have docker client right it's a cli interface through which you will issue your command or interact with the docker engine or docker daemon you have docker images docker images are nothing but the non-running version of a container okay which is used by docker build command to create a container then you have docker container which is the executable package of the software where your application is running you have docker registry where you will keep your docker images by default the docker registry which we use is docker hub but you can also use you can even set up your own registry or you can use some registry which is offered by as a service all right so this is for this video thank you for watching hello so in this lab exercise we would be creating our first container so let's look at these commands before we start executing them so one of the simple command which you can uh, 
run to start creating containers is docker run and the image name okay so for example you can say docker run hello world and it will create a hello world container okay so in the output you will see that it is it will try to find the image locally if it's not find the image locally then it will download the image from docker hub and then it will run a container for you i don't have any flag for this command right now and what does it this command do this command basically creates a container for my specified image another command which you will see is docker ps command so docker ps command basically or docker ps hyphen a command basically shows you containers okay like this so docker ps command will show you only running containers docker ps hyphen a command will show you running containers plus the containers who has exited so here we are using an hyphen a flag and it this command basically shows you all the list of containers then you have docker run hyphen itd command so in docker run command we have uh, included itd so this will again create a container for you but it command will run create a container in an interactive mode so you can log into the container shell whenever you want and d command will run the container in detached mode or background mode then you have docker run hyphen itd command again with a different image name which will create a ubuntu container for you then we have docker run hyphen itd command plus hyphen p command which will basically uh, publish your port publish your container on specified port number so the first 80 after p represents the host port number in our scenario or in my scenario it would be the ec2 port number on which the container uh, would be listening and the second port number is the container port number which is again uh, 80 okay then we also have hyphen name command to name the container without this the container would be given a randomized name and lastly you have the image name so in this example we are using the httpd image which will create an web server or apache web server container for you so here the new flag which we are using is the hyphen p command and hyphen name command hyphen hyphen name command to publish the container on a specified port number and to give a container a specified name respectively okay then we have docker execute hyphen it command to log into your container shell so you can run something like this so you can say docker execute hyphen it uh, on the container which is web container and i want to go into the bash shell of this container okay and you would be uh, thrown inside the bash shell okay then apart from just going inside the shell if you want to execute a command on the container you can even do that so in this uh, example you can see that we are running a uname command with execute so it will show you the output of uname command so then, since we are creating a linux container it will say the output as linux then you have docker stop command which basically stops your container then you have docker rm command which will remove the container altogether from the docker host now let's try out these commands so we can say docker run hello world which will create a hello world container hello world container will execute it will show the output now if i do docker ps the container exited by after showing the output it is not running in detached mode so it got exited so if i do docker ps hyphen a i can see the exited container okay then you can do docker run itd ubuntu so this will create an ubuntu container and it will run the ubuntu container in the background mode so you can see a container up and running then you have docker run itd hyphen p post port number 80 container port number 80 hyphen hyphen name i'm creating a web container and the image i want to use is httpd it could be nginx also whatever you like again now it will download the httpd image from docker hub and it will create a httpd container for you you can see the httpd container running okay then you can say 
docker execute hyphen it let's say i want to go inside the ubuntu container for this scenario inside bin slash bash so there is no so we created ubuntu container without any name so a randomized name is given and a container id is given so i'll say docker execute it followed by the container id or the container name which is the randomized generated name and i want to go to bin slash bash we are inside the container now okay so i can say it if config okay if config is not there let's see iprl we don't have these utilities installed inside the ubuntu container because it's the bare minimum so i'll exit this container now then i can say docker execute it and let's say a web container followed by a command which i want to run on the web container which is uname so it won't throw me inside the container shell but it will just execute the command and show me the output and here we are we can see the linux as an output we can stop the container by saying docker stop and let's say i want to stop the web container And you can say docker rm to so when you stop the container if you do docker ps a you will see it over here in exited state i can remove it altogether by saying docker rm web container is gone let me create the container one more time since we have exposed it on a particular port number and i see the output of this container on web page the answer would be yes so if i use the public ip address of my ec2 instance i can see an output from the container so these are some command initial commands to run your first container and get comfortable with this is it for this lab exercise thank you for watching hello so in this lab exercise i would be showing you certain docker inspect and debugging command which will help you to uh, capture information about a container and also debugging related messages the first command is docker inspect command followed by the object id now it could be the object id of any docker object it could be container image network or storage it will show you the output in json format then you have docker history command which can be used with the docker images and it shows you the changes of in the uh, writable layer of the container image and when it has happened then you have docker top command which shows you the process running inside a container and you have docker logs command which basically shows you the log of the uh, of the runtime or application running inside the container you can also club this command with hyphen f flag to see the logs in trailing mode or continuous mode now let's try out these commands so we'll do first docker inspect of the web container which are which is running already it shows you a lot of details about the container like image uh, sorry yeah but the image which has been used uh, the network details the storage details of this container you can also use docker inspect command with the image and shows you details about the image then we have docker history command which can be used with the image it shows you the various writable layers of the container okay and when it has been upgraded then you have docker top command which shows you the processes running inside the container so let's run and see the running process inside web container so inside web container we have httpd running and we can see that as a process then you have docker logs command to show the logs of the runtime or application inside a container and here we are you can even see it in trailing mode by using hyphen f flag okay so if i access this container now via web browser 
it should generate certain web server logs and here it is okay so these are some uh, information gathering commands and the debugging commands this is it for this lab guys thank you for watching hello so in this lab exercise i would be talking about locker run commands so we have uh, did some run commands in the starting of this section but i'll go into more details of certain more run commands so you can use docker run command with the image id and it will create a container for you you can also do itd flag which will basically run your container with interactive mode in background it will uh, make sure your container runs in interactive mode so that you can log into the container shell or you can interact with the container shell and d means it will run your container in detached or background mode then you have docker itd uh, hyphen docker p command and uh, which basically exposes the port number where you define the host port and the uh, container port followed by hyphen hyphen name command which helps you to name your container then you have your docker itd command hyphen p command followed by hyphen rm command so whenever you stop the container the container would be in exited state you have to manually remove it let's say i don't want to remove the containers manually every time when i stop it it should be removed automatically then in that scenario rm command will automatically remove any stopped container any container which gets stopped then you have hyphen hyphen restart flag restart flag will make sure that your container restarts uh, let's say that the docker service or docker engine was stopped all the containers running will also get stopped okay in those scenarios the can whenever the docker service comes online or docker engine comes online the container doesn't get restarted those would be in exited state okay if you have hyphen hyphen restart flag and i said uh, re restart flag as always it will always restart my container as soon as the docker engine comes back online now here you cannot use rm flag and restart flag though i have shown in the slide over here but that these two flags doesn't work together okay the purpose of showing in the slide was to make you remember that they cannot be used together then you have hyphen e flag to define any environment variables so for example i'm creating a mysql database container now in order to uh, in order for this container to run you need to provide an input variable which is mysql root password so how do i provide this variable environment variable it can be done by defining hyphen e flag so let's try out these commands so you probably know this already it will create a ubuntu container and it would get exited as soon as it was created because i didn't ask it to run in background mode so you can see an exited ubuntu container three seconds back then i can say docker run hyphen itd which will create a ubuntu container and run it in background mode then if i do docker ps i can see an ubuntu container right now i can also do docker run itd followed by hyphen p defining the host port container port name to name the container followed by the image name so this will create a container and expose it on a particular port number okay now i can stop the container but it would be still there on my host you can see it over here it doesn't get removed if i want to remove this container i have to manually remove it i don't want to do this every time then what you can do additionally with your docker run command is you can use hyphen hyphen rm flag as soon as you stop any container it will remove it so if i stop the web container now it will also remove the web container no web container it's gone that is what rm flag does then 
let's let's create a container one more time without rm flag so my container is running right you can see the container running now due to any xyz reason my docker service or docker engine was crashed so i'm manually stopping into this scenario but let's say it got crashed now whenever it will come online the containers would be exited it won't get created automatically all the containers are exited what i want is my web server container should be created automatically as soon as my docker engine comes back online what i can do over here is i can use a special flag known as hyphen hyphen restart flag and i can set the restart as always so my container is running now let's say the service the docker service got crashed again and is back online now if i do docker ps i'll see my web container also started up again automatically so that is what hyphen hyphen restart flag okay then you can also pass on the environment variable so let's say i'm creating a mysql container let's expose it on 3306 let's name it as some db here i can say hyphen e flag followed by mysql root password as a environment variable followed by the password whatever you like i'll say the password as webmagic01 followed by the image name so this will create a mysql database container with the supplied password i can say docker ps yes our database is running let's log into this database to check if the password works or not so i can say docker execute hyphen id the database container name is some db and i want to run a uh, docker sorry, not docker i want to run mysql hyphen u hyphen p so it will ask me the password and if i put the right password i'm logged into the database which is running inside the container so if i say show databases here we are so my database container is also running okay so these are some useful docker run commands this is it for this lab thank you for watching hello so in this lab exercise i'll be showing you some helpful docker commands and the first command in this list is docker info command which gives you a uh, detailed information about the docker engine which is running on your machine okay so it will have details of how many containers how many images you have then which networking storage drivers you are using a lot of details okay you have docker help command which can be clubbed with other docker build run command to basically get the auto suggestions or suggestions about the command so if you're forgetting any flag uh, and you want certain help then you can use docker help command then you have docker system prone command which basically removes everything so it will stop all the containers it will remove all the images build caches all right it will remove all the networks it will delete everything for you so these are some useful commands let's try them out the first one is docker info command and here you can see a lot of details so i have six containers which has created two are running four four are stopped i have four images so a lot of details over here then you have docker help command which helps you 
shows you all the possible actions which can be performed with docker uh, command itself so i can say docker run and i don't know what to do after docker run i can say help here you need to put hyphen hyphen and it will show you all the possible flags and inputs which can be entered okay and finally you have docker system prone command which will destroy everything on your docker host i'll say yes and everything is deleted so if i say docker ps running containers are excluded because i didn't use hyphen four flag but it has clean the exited container at least all right any build caches would also be removed okay so these are some other useful command this is it for this lab exercise guys thank you for watching hello so in this lesson we are talking about what are docker images and we would be doing an overview on docker images so docker images are nothing but it's a read only copy with the instruction for creating a container it's a non-running version of a container in very simple words okay and these images are often made from a base image just like your virtual machine so whenever you create a virtual machine in any cloud provider you choose a base image which is already available and on top of it you create a vm and on top of it you uh, install whatever you like you do the customization same way uh, when you talk about creating docker images docker images are also created using a base file the only difference is that you don't do you you don't do it through a gui or some user interface you write the instruction in a file so you use a base image and whatever customization you want to do to the base image you write the instruction in a file so for example you may build an image which is based of ubuntu image so ubuntu would be the base image and on top of that you will install apache web server and as well as you will copy the app, your application files and anything which is needed any configuration change is needed for running your uh, running your application so this is what docker images are so docker images are the uh, read only templates again uh, which are used for creating containers okay now as i said you create your docker images not through a gui or user interface you write instruction in a file and that file is known as a docker file so what is a docker file so it's a file where you are basically define uh, the commands or customizations to create your own image to to build your own image you create a docker file with a simple syntax for defining steps needed to create an image and run it okay each instruction in a docker file creates a layer in the image so docker uses a layered file system that's why the statement says it adds a layer each statement is a layer when you change the docker file and rebuild the image only the layer which has changed will be rebuilt so this is again an advantage so whenever you're rebuilding or doing any changes the entire image is not rebuilt only that particular instruction is run and it creates the layer and only that that layer is built so it basically uh, fast enough the overall process of building a docker image all right so this is an example for a docker file so here what we have done is we have defined a base image uh, and the base image here we are using is a node base image so this base image would be having node.js pre-installed and on top of that we are installing some additional packages like python 2 and then we are setting up slash app directory as the working directory then we are copying all the application files then we are running some package manager and installing some packages and then finally we are running the node application and exposing it on page port number 3000 so this is what the docker file would look like now this docker file would be converted to a docker image and from the docker image you will create your containers which will have your node.js application running on top of it okay now what is docker hub so let's say you have created an image and you have kept these images locally on your laptop or wherever you have built it now you want to share it or you want to basically run it on a different server altogether so we need need a centralized place for keeping the images and the centralized place of keeping the images is known as repository docker hub is a service provided by docker for finding and sharing docker images with your team so it's a repository provided by docker as a company right and it is the world's largest repository of container images with array of content sources using container uh, community developer images open source projects and even vendor independent vendor software images all right uh, and you can even push your images and can be shared 
again your images can be public you can keep your images private you can do all these things so there are official images from isv partners then there are community images and then there are official images from docker themselves okay so these are the different types of images you will find in docker up plus you can push your own images as well okay so this is it for this lesson thank you okay so in this lab exercise we will be seeing how to write your own docker file and then create a container image out of it so let's get started so what we will do is we will create a project directory and inside that project directory we will create a python application okay uh, known as app.py it will just print something on the screen a uh, very simple basic app, python application then the dependency required for the python application would be defined in requirement.txt file and then finally we'll have a docker file now the content of the docker file would be something like this so we'll say from python so basically we are defining that we would be using python base image and this python base image would be uh, created from another base image which is a, an alpine operating system base image so that's why the image name says python colon 2.7 hyphen alpine then inside this uh, python image or the base image we would be creating a directory known as app and we would be setting that directory as the working directory or the default directory then we will copy the requirements file inside the working directory which is slash app then we will run python package installer to install the dependency then we will copy the app file which is app.py file inside the app directory we can also optionally set a label saying that this image would be maintained by webmagic informatica followed by the email id followed by the version and then finally we will run flask so over here what does flask do so flask is a framework for python web web applications so we are running that flask uh, framework on port 0.0.0 .0 .0 and exposing it on port 5000 so this service would be listening on port 5000 so our application our web application would be running on port 5000 all right now the command once this uh, structure is ready the command used to build an image would be docker build dot dot means in current directory there is a docker file so you have to run this command from the directory where you have placed the docker file just keep that in mind and optionally you can use a tag with hyphen t to name the image okay let's try this out in our ec2 instance I have a EC2 instance which has docker pre-installed okay and over here I'll create a directory first I'll call it as app inside this app directory I'll start creating the files so first I'll create the app.py file and the content of the app.py file would be very basic it would say just print or return zero so if you want you can put zero or if you want you can put something else as well so whenever this application would be loaded on the web screen it will uh, just display zero that's all it's going it's gonna do okay let's save this file and let's look if everything is saved properly yeah now we'll create the requirement.txt file and inside the requirement.txt file we will define the dependency and dependency for this app this application is the flask runtime or flask framework and finally we will have our docker file in place and the content of the docker file is already shown to you paste it and I'll just start so this is done we have the necessary files in place now i can say docker build hyphen t and the image name so let's call this image as uh, web app and dot to define that in current directory there is a docker file this is building the image so first it is pulling the base image from docker hub now inside this base image it is creating the directory then setting the working directory then copying the requirement file then installing the python packages 
then copying the remaining part of the application setting the label and finally running the flask runtime or uh, framework flask framework not the runtime but the framework yeah now if i do docker image ls we'll have our application image over here okay so this is how you can create an image now let's quickly create a container from this image so i can say docker run itd even e so let's say i'll expose this app container on port 5000 okay then hyphen e this uh, container requires an environment variable which is flask app so i'll define hyphen e to define environment variable then i'll name this container as web container and then finally i'll define the image name which is web app if i do docker ps we have our application running on port 5000 okay let's try to access it so in since this virtual this is this container is running on ec2 instance which is on aws i'll go to security group and i'll say add inbound tool so if you are doing the same thing in other cloud platforms you would need to use the you need to create the necessary firewall rules so that you can access the application and i'll allow port 5000 for anywhere and then i'll copy the public ip address of this machine and hit it on port 5000 okay and it returns zero over here as we have uh, set in the python file or python application all right so this is it for this lab guys thank you for watching all right so in this lab exercise we will see how to push a image to docker hub so in the previous videos you saw what is docker hub so you can create a docker hub account all right just go to hub.docker.com and uh, just fill in the details to create your free account so that you can push your own images to docker hub now to build an image we would be using following commands so we already sorry we have already built the image so for pushing the image we would be using following commands so first we'll do docker login to log into our docker hub account from the docker daemon which will ask your user id and password okay and once you are logged in then you can start pushing the images for pushing the images first you would need to tag your image with your docker hub username so if my docker hub username is webmagic then i have to tag my image to webmagic slash web app or web one or whatever my image name is and then only i would be able to push it once you have tagged the image you can use docker push command followed by the image name with, with the tagged image name and this will push the image to the docker hub so the, these are the commands involved so let's tie them out on the docker host so if i do docker image ls i have a docker image known as web app so first let's do docker login to log into my docker hub account now let's tag the image so i'll tag my web app image with my docker hub username slash web app colon the version you can say v1 v2 or you can simply say if you don't put anything it would be latest so let's say this is my v1 image so i'll say v1 so this will tag my image so if i do docker image ls i'll see the tagged image now i can say docker push okay followed by the tagged image name and this will push the image to my docker hub account so if i go to docker hub i can see the image over here pushed few seconds ago so this is how you can push the image to docker hub this is it for this lab exercise thank you for watching hello so in this lesson we are talking about some best practices to build docker images so whenever you are building the docker images 
then always keep these things in your mind so first is that you always use a lightweight image so whenever you're using a base image use a lightweight image so uh, use an alpine image okay which is a uh, very lightweight uh, base image itself is hardly uh, 5 mb so anything you're building on top of it all right becomes very light and your ultimate image is also light right so use a base image lightweight base image second is use uh, docker dot docker ignore file to ignore the files which you don't want to copy inside the docker image then use multi-stage build so there could be two from commands in your docker file first from command will build your application and whatever the application build artifact is generated can be copied to a second from command which will have a lightweight image okay so first uh, image first from command will have a full image of an application hdk or application runtime okay with all the libraries and second base image will only have your application artifact to just run it so there is something known as multi-stage build which can be used don't install unnecessary packages inside your application okay by default docker base images are very lightweight and one of the reasons is that it doesn't have a lot of unnecessary packages for example alpine image doesn't have uh, utilities like ping or if config all right the reason of not having these utilities to keep the image lightweight since it is the core purpose of these images are just to run the application not to have anything else decouple the application so uh, we use docker containers or containers to build microservices so big bulky monoliths are not recommended all right decouple your application into small components and run, run them minimize the number of layers so you can club your commands together so instead of using multiple installation commands try to in use one single installation command uh, where all the packages can be installed within your docker image and sort multi-line arguments all right so these are some best practices to build a good docker image and this is it for this lesson thank you for watching hello so in this lesson we are talking about the docker network and we will be doing an overview on what is docker network and how it is useful or how the docker network works okay so let's get started so one of the reasons why docker and its services are so widely adopted is that docker can the containers which you are running on a docker host can communicate with uh, each other as well as the non docker workload maybe a physical server or a virtual machine okay so the docker uh, the docker container or service do not need to be aware that they are deployed on container so any applications running on container it doesn't even knows that it is running on a container or running inside a container okay so what docker does is that it basically provides the underlying un the virtual machine which is running inside a container necessary resources we saw that uh, your containers has ram and cpu plus it also has the networking uh, components like the interface card and the IP addresses or the port number. Okay, so this is the reason why the container doesn't the application running inside the container doesn't know that they are running inside the container. So whether you are running Docker host as a Linux, Windows, or mix of two, all right, the containers running on them, okay, can talk to each other and you can use Docker to manage them in a platform agnostic way. Okay, so how is this possible? How does uh, how does the uh, docker engine or the any container runtime provides the containers the necessary networking resources so what docker does is it uses networking drivers or network drivers these networking drivers are nothing but pluggable uh, plugins like pluggable uh, softwares all right okay which basically provides the virtual networking capabilities to your containers so when i say virtual networking capabilities it means virtual interface card, virtual router, virtual DNS, so that your containers can have an IP address. It can, the, the when two containers want to talk to each other, they can be routed uh, within, the traffic can be routed using the virtual, virtual router. Okay, and it can be even routed to the outside world using the uh, host uh, virtual interface card or physical interface card if it's running on a virtual machine. So it provides all the core networking functionality just as a normal virtual machine or a physical server has to your containers. This is possible using networking drivers and there are various networking drivers and each of the networking drivers provide different capabilities. To name some of the naming driver, some of the networking drivers come which, which comes pre-installed are you have bridge networking driver, host networking driver, 
over the networking driver and you can have no networking driver which is none so your containers wouldn't have networking at all so you can even choose that okay so let's talk about each of these networking drivers how they provide networking capabilities to your container and what unique capabilities each of them provide so to start with we will talk about bridge network so this is the net default networking driver which comes in installed with on your docker engine and whenever you create any container like till now we have been creating containers and those containers were getting created using the default networking drivers if you don't specify any drivers while creating the container this network driver this is the type of network driver you create by default it gets created by default or by default it is used by your container bridge networks are usually used when your application runs in a standalone container that needs to communicate communicate with other containers on the same host on the same standalone host or maybe with the outside world okay so you will have your physical server or virtual machine which will have its own networking interface on top of that you will have operating system container runtime or docker runtime <coughs> and over here you will install the bridge network driver and there is something known as IPM network driver which comes which gets installed with bridge network driver this is for DNS resolution now whenever you create containers each of the containers will be allocated a private IP address you can see my web container has an IP address of 192.168.1.3 again you can define the IP address range so if you want two IP address range so my queuing container has a different IP address range altogether as you can see and the IP address range are created on a virtual routing device known as bridge and by default the default networking the default networking virtual network device which gets created is known as docker 0 so by default your container gets created on docker 0 bridge okay and this docker 0 bridge is uh, has the routes to the physical or the virtual interface card depending upon wherever you are running the container on a virtual machine or a physical server so that the traffic can go to the outside world okay if you create a if you create a new network range using bridge networking driver uh, a new bridge uh, would get created and your containers would be attached to those and another advantage is that if you have multiple bridge created using the bridge networking drivers the containers still can talk to each other in different different bridge so my web container or database container can still talk to the queuing container okay so this is how the bridge networking driver works and now whenever you want to access the container from the outside world let's say i want to access my web container from the outside world i'll hit the ip address of my physical server or virtual machine which is 192.31.1.5 okay on a particular port number and that traffic will go to the bridge zero bridge zero will basically have a routing table and it will route the traffic to the right container based on the port number which you have mentioned after the ip address of the virtual machine or physical server okay so that's how the things work then you have host networking driver in host networking driver the uh, the standalone containers for sta again it is for standalone container remove the network isolation between the container and the docker host so there is no abstraction such as docker bridge and use the host networking directly so your container will be directly mapped to the interface card of your virtual machine or physical server so if you hit 172.31.1.5 on port 80 for example then the traffic will go to let's say uh, web server container if you have defined it on to run on port number 18 okay so your containers would be having the same ip address as of your physical server or virtual machine then you have overlay network overlay network connects multiple docker daemons so if you have one or more virtual machines or physical server running the uh, containers okay and you want in them to con uh, communicate with each other right then in that scenario the overlay network comes into play so it connects multiple docker daemon together and enables docker some service to communicate with each other you can use overlay network to facilitate communication between some service so if you have a cluster service if you have multiple docker host that scenario you will use it and in a standalone container between two standalone containers on a different docker daemon Okay, this uh, strategy removes the need to have OS level networking between container. So this is what overlay network does. All right, so these are the different networking drivers and uh, we briefly understood how uh, the Docker network works. So it's like 
as same as your virtual machine has IP addresses and virtual interface card in same way your containers will also have virtual interface card or IP addresses depending upon the networking driver you select so this is it for this video thank you for watching all right so in this lab exercise we will see some docker network commands so first see let's see how to get the list of docker network so if you do docker network ls it will show you the list of the network which is uh, created by default when you install docker engine right next if you want to create your own docker network you can say docker network create command hyphen hyphen driver so by default you have the bridge driver and the host only driver and the overlay net overlay driver pre-installed okay so using one of these drivers you can create a new network with a network name so the command would look like this so you will have the command docker network create hyphen hyphen driver let's say i want to create a network using bridge networking driver so i will say the driver is bridge followed by the network name saying first network okay this will create the network for you right so next is how do you create container on the network you created so in the docker run command you just need to add a new flag which is hyphen hyphen net followed by the network name to create the network create a container on that network that's all all right let's try out these commands on our docker engine so first thing let's say docker network ls so this will show me the list of docker networks okay next let's create a network so i'll say docker network create hyphen hyphen driver as bridge followed by the network name so i'll say first network okay this will create your network so if i say docker network less we have the network in place which uses bridge networking driver now you can even use the docker inspect command let's say docker network inspect followed by the network name or network id and this will give me the details over here so the ip range details you can see over here and if you have any containers attached to them you will even even see that over here so we don't have any containers right now now let's create a container so what i'll do is continuing the application from our previous lectures we have developed a python application now let's add a database to this application so i'll create a database container and we would be using the redis database so i'll use the docker run command to create a redis container exposed on port number 3679 followed by the network name okay followed by the container name followed by the container image so i'm using redis image directly I'm not creating any Redis, Redis or database image. I'm using a ready-made Redis database image. Move this over here. Okay, I missed the flag. So this will download the redis image and create a redis container for us so if i do docker ps we have the redis container running let me get rid of my a python application container so i'll say docker stop web app it's web container actually let me remove the web container as well so i'll say rm command to remove them or remove it this is gone 
now i'll do some changes to the application okay so right now the application is static it displays a zero value okay what i'll do is i'll make the application to count numbers and whatever numbers it is counting it will save that value inside the redis database now when it will count numbers whenever you will load the application on the web browser it will load it will count that numbers and the number of time you refresh the web page okay it will add a count to that number and it will save it the value inside the database so this is a small change which we are doing inside the application okay so let's do a vi to app.py and let's put on the new application code so as you can see it is trying to communicate with the redis container using the redis host name because our redis container has the container name as redis that make, makes the redis host name redis container host name also redis itself so whatever container name you will keep inside your bridge network that becomes the host name of that container so using the host name my application is trying to connect to the redis container on port number 3679 okay and whatever values it is counting it is saving that value inside a key known as web2 counter okay so let's save this application code next i would need to update my requirement.txt as well since the application will now talk to the redis database it requires one new library to be added apart from normal flask it requires the flask redis library so i'll add that as well and we don't have much change inside the docker file so docker file remains the same i just need to rebuild the image because i've done some changes inside the application code so i'll say docker build hyphen t web app this is v2 image dot this builds the new docker image I do docker image ls we have the new version of the image in place now we will create this new version of the image on the new network which we have created so i'll say docker run itd hyphen t let's run it on port 80 on the host and port 5000 is the application or the container on which it is listening then the environment variable followed by the name okay followed by the network finally the image name and we are using v2 image so this creates our new container okay now we can connect to this container using the ip address And here we are so the values are increasing as, as as many time we refresh and it is getting saved inside the redis container all right so what did we saw in this lab so we saw how to create a new bridge network or a network using bridge driver that is one thing then second how do i create container on that driver then third we saw the hostname resolution happens between the containers and they can communicate with each other and containers can communicate with the outside wall also so each container over here we have two containers anyways but each of them has their own private ip address they can communicate with each other they have their own host name and all of this thing is possible using the docker network okay so this is it for this lab thank you for watching hello so in this lesson we are talking about the docker storage let's get started with it so let's say that you have created a database container and let's say you're running mongodb database and this mongodb database has some files which has saved it would be your data which is saved inside the database because database ultimately writes the data on the file system on which it is running right 
okay so it has written some data and the container gets deleted or containers get crashed and due to any xyz reason you have to create that container again now when you create a container again the data which the database container has created the data would be gone why the data wasn't saved the docker by default doesn't persist any data okay so this scenario can arise in your database scenario or if you have an application which generates any data okay which wants to save any state this scenario might arise for you okay, or for your container where it's not able to save that file somewhere okay which would be a challenge because we can run databases also in also inside the container and the data has to be saved somewhere because if the container fails then where does the, your data go so how do i uh, solve this challenge so the data doesn't process when the container no longer exists and it is difficult to get the data out of the container if the another process needs it okay so a container write table rail is tightly coupled to the host machine where the container is running and you can't easily move the data somewhere else writing the data inside the write table layer requires a storage driver so now your contain in order for your container to interact with the os file system or os storage or operating system storage it requires a networking drivers very similar to what we saw in networking to talk to your host networking we uh, install some pluggable softwares which were known as networking drivers in same way your containers should talk to your operating system storage or access the operating system file system okay, it requires a storage driver to manage the file system the storage driver provides a uniform file system using linux kernels this extra abstraction resources of performance as compared to using the data volume which is directly at directly which write uh, which write directly to the host file system okay so we instead of mounting the external storage directly to container okay, it would be using the operating system storage by uh, using an abstraction which uses linux kernels in some way okay so how it is achieved so you will basically install a storage driver depending upon the operating system you use there are various storage drivers available okay by default when you install docker engine docker engine by default detects the best uh, storage driver for your os and it installs it and then what you can do is you can create directly mount your container directory to the file system inside the file system inside the directory using the storage driver you can directly so let's say that i have a directory in my mongodb container known as slash data that slash data directly directory can be directly mounted to one of the directory in your file system or of your os okay and this type of mapping is known as bind mount okay there is one more approach this is like this would be managed by you you need to decide which directory needs to be mounted on the container or map with the container okay there is another approach where you will create something known as docker volume okay and whenever you create a docker volume a docker area which is where lib docker okay inside this a directory would be created okay, and that directory would be mapped to your container directory in container there could be any directory less let's say slash data or slash logs okay that would be mapped to your where lib docker directory in your file system this is known as the docker area and this type of the mapping of the file system with your container file system is known as docker volume so now what happens you use either of one what happens is whatever data is written to the slash data directory of your container gets saved on your os file system now if you use bind mount it would be the directory of your choosing if you're using docker volume then it would be a directory which gets created inside where lib docker that gets mounted to your container directory so this is how the storage is maintained inside your docker host so bind mounts may be stored anywhere on the host system you need to decide which directory it would be they may be even uh, they may be important file system or directories non docker process on the docker host or docker or a docker container can modify them at any time then you have docker volumes volumes are stored in in a part of host file system which is managed by docker that is where lib docker okay on linux non docker process can not modify it that is the major thing okay this part of file system so 
if any files which is created in their lib docker okay, cannot you, that files cannot be modified by the non docker processes volumes are best way to process data in containers or docker okay so this is it for this video thank you for watching all right so in this lab exercise we'll look at some docker storage commands so let's start with bind mount so to create a bind mount or to mount your uh, directory uh, your host directory to your container directory you can use hyphen v flag followed by the host directory then the container directory so in this sample you can see home user is mounted to the container directory user local apache to ht docs okay so this will mount your directories uh, your host directory to your container directory and that creates a bind mount you can get the list of docker volumes by doing docker volume ls then you can create a docker volume by saying docker volume create and the volume name this will create a docker volume for you then you can mount a docker volume which you have created by using again hyphen v flag followed by this time the docker volume name and the directory where you want mounted inside the container so these are some commands to mount the storage on the containers now let's try out these commands so if i say docker ts i have two running containers let's say i log into one of the container docker execute it web container okay let's do ls over here so we have some files over here let's say i create a new file let's call it info.txt okay so the file is created and let exit and let's say now my container gets deleted due to any xyz reason okay my container gets deleted so, so i deleted so i'll say docker stop yes okay so the container is gone now if i recreate this container by saying docker volume itd hyphen p a t okay then name then the execution flag followed by the network followed by the rm flag and then finally the image name so we have the container created and if i try to log in inside this container again by doing docker execute do we have that file no it is gone because the container got deleted now let's recreate this container with the bind mount and let's see what changes i'll use the same command the only thing that will change over here is i will say hyphen v and i'll say home ec2 hyphen user this directory should be mounted to to slash app directory inside the container okay so the container is created again and let's log into this container and let's create a file again this time info.txt let's exit the container and we have the same file in our local file system also why because this directory is mounted inside the container this is how bind mount works and same way if i stop my redis container so let, let's say the current state inside my redis container is 18 so 18 time this uh, web page is loaded and this state is saved inside my redis container so if i log into my redis container very quickly so if i say docker execute redis then followed by redis hyphen cli okay and if i say 
get m key or let's say i'll say just say get key Mm, keys as just so let's say get all keys so we have this key known as uh web2 and inside this web2 key the values is getting saved now if i exit this container and let's say this container gets deleted okay and now let's say i recreate this container by docker run itd command Six three seven nine six three seven nine hyphen hyphen name redis then the network flag okay followed by the image name so redis colon three point two hyphen alpine we have the containers created again but the state is not maintained gone why because the container was deleted so any file or any data which was saved inside the container gets deleted and the value or the counter was getting saved inside the container so this time i will process data in my redis container by using a volume okay so let's stop the redis container one more time okay and let's create a docker volume first i can say docker volume create followed by redis wall i'll name this volume as redis wall and if i do red docker volume ls so this is my volume created and if you do docker in docker volume inspect command This is where the docker volumes data would be saved inside where lib docker volumes followed by the volume name and there is a directory so now let's mount this volume to our container redis container i'll use the same command but only thing that will change is a new flag which is hyphen v okay followed by the volume name and i want to mount this volume to a slash data directory inside my redis container So let's remove it. Let's try now. Okay, so our that is container is created this time with a Docker volume associated to it. So any data now getting saved inside the Redis container would be saved inside the volume under and the volume is nothing but a directory inside where live Docker. So this is how you can manage storage inside or for your containers by using bind mount or docker volume this is it for this lab thank you for watching hello so in this lesson we will talk about docker compose so let's first understand what is docker compose so docker compose is a tool for defining and running multi-container docker application just like our application it has a python app plus a database which is redis database so it's a multi-container multi application Okay, so with Compose, you can basically write a YAML file to configure your application services. Then with a single command, you can create, start all the services from your configuration. So till now, what we have been doing is that we have been writing Docker file, building image out of it, then creating container. Okay, same thing we did for Redis as well. Right, and we ran multiple commands in our previous uh, lessons We and labs, we run various commands. Okay, to create our application container and database container docker compose solves this challenge so whenever you have a multi-container app you define everything what you want to create inside a yml file and docker compose and you run a docker compose command and it will create the containers it will build the image if you want to create a volume it will create that volume 
if you want to create a network if it can even create that network for you so you don't need to run 10 different commands define everything you want inside a single yml file and run that yml file and it will create the necessary containers and necessary things required to run your container so this is what docker compose does and this is it for this lesson thank you for watching okay so in this lab exercise we are using docker compose to build our application the python and the redis application which we have been using till now okay so what we will do is inside our application directory uh, apart from files which we have already we will add, an, add one additional file which is the compose file and inside compose file we will write what we want to create like we want to create a redis container with a docker volume and a uh, python container which has our application right and before creating that python container the image needs to be built okay so that is something what we will define so we will define services and inside service we will define a redis service and we will define the image how to create this redis service with with image and the port number on which it will run the volume it should have and then we will define a web service there we will define first you need to build the container image in the current directory there would be a docker file using that docker file build an image and it depends the creation of this web container depends on the creation of redis container the first redis container needs to be created then only the web container would spin up then the environment variables so hyphen e flag which we define as a command now you can define whatever variable you need inside and dot env file and it will pick up those variable as a key value pair then the port volume the current directory would be mounted as a volume on the app directory inside the container and it will also create a docker volume for redis okay so this is how you write the compose file now we'll switch back to our lab environment and we'll try it out now before, before we can try this out we will remove everything we'll stop our containers We can also remove the image. Okay, so I'll remove also the images. Images are gone. Now inside my current directory, I have a compose file. Okay, so we have the compose file and I'll run a command which is docker compose hyphen D. To run it in background up okay now before i can run this command i forgot to show you how to install docker compose so we'll, let's first quickly docker compose doesn't comes installed with the docker engine by default so let's first install docker compose on this uh, ec2 machine okay so we'll download the compose file from its git repository Then we'll add necessary permissions. And the Docker Compose is installed. Now I can run the Docker Compose command. So Docker Compose up hyphen D. Okay, so I guess we are missing an env file let's create the env file very quickly and the content of the env file is very straightforward it will have the necessary environment variable in form of key value pair okay let's try it now so whatever we have been doing manually running multiple commands gets done in one single command you define whatever we whatever containers or images you want to create inside the file and it will do the work for you okay so if i do docker ps we have the containers created so this is what docker compose is and this is it for the slab thank you for watching